The Story of Immortals For Catia Magna Our five heroes Walked in a dimension of light A void from all matter Bare floating was the blue-eyed Long golden angelic hair Winded, white windy, winded White winged I should say Clothed in maculate gold and white suit was none other than Zocata Magna himself. The power that oozed from him was greater than any force any of our five heroes had ever faced. Some, being Andrew and Siegfried, had other lives before, and all who they ever encountered paled in comparison to Fogata Magna himself. Fogata Magna then began to speak to our heroes. Impressive, all of you. You have done well. Now that the angels have met their much needed awards, I would like for you all to join me in replacing them. Then this universe and all of time and space will all go peace once more. Join me and Fokata Magna was caught short as he saw Sonoma standing next to Natasha. The plan Fokata Magna had in place was for a mortal sniper to kill Sonoma during that last battle. When Natasha and Sonoma fought thousands to millions of immortals by themselves. Then he would lure and tempt Natasha in bringing Sonoma back to life. And thus her succumbing to, his, to him in order to bring Sonoma back to life would be the key for getting our heroes with the great power to submit to him. And finally winning over his enemy. But the best way to defeat your enemy is not just to kill them. No, the more so to get them to bow the knee to you. However, for Captain Magna then realized that only one person could have thwarted his plans and rescued so no more. But Captain Magna then said, Damn! Curse that desolate floor. She stands in my way all the time. And so, the R5 feels so confused, not knowing what Vakata Magna was talking about. But Vakata Magna then gambled and said, So no more. Your sister no more was a brave girl. I know for being in all time and space in this void of time. But you indeed miss her very much. I can bring her back to you. Just as how I've brought so many back from time and space. Join me and she will return. Then Sonoma rebuked for Captain Magna and said, No, how dare you get my sister's name out of your filthy mouth, you false demon. You false light demon. My sister died. A worthy death and bringing her back because those that are motivated by her sacrifice in her generation to lose their fight. I will not be so foolish to fall for your false tricks. And how do I know that the one that you bring back will truly be my sister and not a clone or an immortal disguised as her? I am no fool. And then Sonoma read his toughest for battle. Natasha then added her words. I heard your mind for Captain Magno. And it seems that that sort of flaw indeed has helped us far beyond Siegfried said. Now, with this blade and with these guns in my ankles, and with all those that I fight for and those yet to be born, I will not rest until I defeated your evil. And then Zen followed on and said 
I've lost so many of my allies and friends it's in this age of chaos which you have started. The day the light shall end and a new age. The age in which I know my goddaughter Natasha will bring forth shall begin. Sin then prepares and readies himself. And then afterwards, Siegfried Sinjin readied to sort of utopia for its last fight. Come! For Captain Magna. This time, I'm not running away from you. And I'm not being caught off guard. I will finish the job off. You will join Chevalier in hell! And then Andrew followed on nastily and said, If the power of the emblem in all of my forefathers, both past and present, all of my allies and friends that have died and were victims of your time disruption, including my own self, and those I called worthy foes, I fight for all of them. For all of us have been victims of your manipulation and lies and deceit. Your time and the plain ways are over, forgotten Magna. Great power not. You are powerless against our combined might. Come, everyone, to battle. And then Forgata Magna then said, So, you dare refuse my offer of peace? Then you all shall be destroyed. And then Forgata Magna completely changed his demeanor. His wings perked up and a makeshift fire sword reminiscent of his times as Chevalier appeared in his hand, his left hand. And then for Captain Magnus said, You're going to regret not siding with me. Prepare to die. And then all five of our heroes and for Captain Magnus dashed and the great fight had begun. As the fighting commenced, our heroes laid everything they had their special abilities at for Captain Magno. But he was as light itself and moved quickly and dodged all of their attacks. As our allies struggled to get to him, then for Captain Magno, then shined his great light himself, his light radiant of him, and was blasting our heroes left and right and center. Then Andrew replied, Dodge his light, he's using it against us. And Siegfried said, Follow up on our shields. Stand behind me and Andrew, the rest of you. And then everyone stand behind behind Andrew and Siegfried as they began to fight. And then Lucata Magno then disappeared and appeared behind them and then started to unleash his sword attacks and other fast and powerful attacks. And Natasha and Zen counted with their swords. Siegfried Sinjin also joined the fight. And after all of this was done, the Tangna Magna then dashed up in the speed of light up into the heavens. And a mighty ray of light dazzled in the spiral motion up as Vokata Magna led a trail of light energy. And then the light energy exploded into a billion pieces and turned into fiery whips, whipping our allies and hurting them greatly. Then, after that, for Captain Magna was not done, then he used his powerful wings and dashed and zoomed and cut off. Uh, so no more Natasha, Zen, Siegfried, Synergy and Andrew were all attacked and hit and affected. Andrew then used his emblem into full power and began to beat back on for Cardinal Magno, who seemed to be unfazed. Then for, for Cardinal Magno, he used his sword in his hand and pushed Andrew away. Then Siegfried launched multiple hands of the wrath of heaven and directed directly at for Cardinal Magno. For Cardinal Magno then used one hand and hold all the fists in one hand, crushed his hand and the fists disappeared. And then for Cardinal Magno suddenly appeared in front of Sonoma in front of Siegfried Synergen and then he did a roundhouse kick. Siegfried Synergen was down for the count. Next, Sen and Natasha worked together 
and use their sword play against Fakata Magno. But Fakata Magno was too fast for them. He then disappeared again and then he used his two wings and clapped his wings, making a sonic boom and blasted the swords of Natasha and Zen as they fell down. So Norman then used his tomfus and started to blast Fakata Magno, who then covered his shield himself with his wings. The floor used his blaster from his emblem as well. And then as they began to fire, Fakata Magno had enough and he spun around very fast with his wings acting as projectiles and blasting the blast from Sonoma and Andrew right back at them. Then Sonoma had to duck for cover and Andrew had to shield up. And then Zen replied, It's hopeless. This guy's beyond strong. Then Siegfried Sinjin said, We must give him our full, full power. Everyone power up. We have the great power. It's time we lose all of, all of it. Attack! And then the five heroes became full powered and used their special attacks. Natasha with her lake scissors, Sonoma with his blasters, Zen with his with the orange sun attack, Siegfried Sinjin with multiple Excaliburs, and Andrew Lefleur with his Angelica blast. All that was done directly at for Captain Magno, who did not flinch and took it all. And then for Captain Magno, Ben raised up his hands. And the light dimension began to shake as a great pillar of light engulfed all of our heroes. They all were down for the count again. If they didn't have the great power, they were all being dead a long time ago. All seemed hopeless at this point. How could they overcome such a being in his own dimension? He is super strong. Stronger than anything they ever have seen. And then forgot the magnet said, you fools, do you have enough? Did you have enough of that? Or do you want more? How do you stand against one as me? The one and ultimate being of all the universes. You fools, you ignorant, incompetent fools. Come at me. Certainly you have more than that to give. And then Zen got up first and said, You blasphemous dog, how dare you incriminate yourself to God Almighty? Family and friends, we must work together. We must end him now. And then all five of them got up again and rushed, Siegfried, and rushed for Captain Magna. For Captain Magna then dashed at them from the sky down to the ground and began to fight them at ground level. And then he used his sword and walked very slowly, wiping it left, right, and center, dodging, ducking, and blocking all of our heroes' attacks. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, Bukata Magnus said, Phantom Mirage! It was Chevalier's special attack. And then a big explosion engulfed our heroes. They were down for the count for a third time. All seemed hopeless. As then Orange remembered the pain of what a Phantom Mirage could do. He said, damn it. Ugh, the pain. The pain is just like last time. It seems like we're not even at the power that we once had anymore. How could we overcome this guy? And then Natasha got up first and said, we mustn't give up. We have our family, our friends, our allies from across different universes still fighting on. They are fighting so we could have the victory. We can't allow their sacrifice, their blood, sweat and tears to go unnoticed. To be for vain, to be for naught. We must combine our wills as one and face him together. That is the only way we could win this. And then Andrew had an idea. You're right, my daughter. That is it. We must fight as one. Everyone, we have been fighting him individually if our own attacks are given turns. That cannot defeat him. Like Ira said, we are the chosen five. We must act as one to defeat him. 
come everyone. We must synchronize our attacks and attack them all at once. Follow me. The, em the emblem, the sword of Utopia. The orange sword of the sun. Sonoma's Tonfus and Natasha's blade and pistols. All attacked. For Captain Magna at once. For Captain Magna then started to use his sword. And started moving it at a faster pace. To duck all of their attacks. At this point, for Captain Magna thought they would have been dead by now. But somehow, Natasha's words had motivated them. Seeing that Natasha was truly a threat because of her words had motivated the Androskan forces in the past when all hope seemed lost and motivated them to eventually win. For Captain, no for Captain Magna knew that this was a problem and so he had to end this battle quickly and so he disappeared and reappeared up again and this time he had a special surprise with him. I have had enough of this. I've moved at the speed of light to bring the new, or I should say, dimensional planes here to you all. Now I will use this former home of my old self to crush you all to oblivion. And then the whole entire dimensional planes was crashing onto our heroes. Siegfried Sinjin and Andrew used their shields and remainder of their great power, strength, to hold off this massive, massive projectile. As they struggled, everyone else went behind them. And Sen and Natasha looked on, hoping that Siegfried and Andrew could hold on and somehow blocked it from happening. Block it from attack, killing them. While that was going on and everyone was distracted, Siegfried Sinjin then appeared, no, not Siegfried Sinjin, but he appeared to be tired. And Sen then used his sword to help Siegfried out in blocking the new dimensional planes. Then suddenly, Fakata Magna appeared behind them and was about to take off his sword to slay Natasha. So Norma then noticed this and went to block it with his tonfus and said, You bastard! You're not hit Natasha. Stay away from her. And then Natasha saw it and then began to blast her blasters. And then for Captain Magna, dodged it and went away. The dimensional planes was destroyed. And Siegfried, Synergen, Sen and Andrew were extremely tired at this point. After that, for Captain Magna had truly had enough of this. And he said, I will summon the great light to consume all of time and space. I will destroy it. I along with destroying you and recreate everything in my own image. And then the light appeared all over the place. It seemed hopeless. The battles that were being fought with Solace, Samsama, and all the youngsters of Sabina, Moron, and Grayton, Alina, Serlene, Christina, Devlin, the Builderon, and that of the Madonians and the Carolians and the Allen family and everyone else saw the light was coming. And then Grayton then noticed, You gotta be kidding me. The light is back? What is happening? And then Moron was like, Oh no, it can't be. And then Ara saw the light coming. And said, everyone, run from the light. He's going to consume us all. Look, this void beyond the light is consuming the entire universe. And then Ara said, no, this is happening in every universe. And then in the Lagoon universe, the Christon were noticing the light as well. And said, what is that? The light is destroying the entire base. Run! Panic was all over the universes. As for Calder Magna was willing to destroy everything if he could not contain it. Our heroes knew that they had to do something. And then Natasha said, We have no choice. We have to attack him. 
and get him out of this dimension. And then Sonoma asked, what do you mean? Mimanavi said, if the Katamagna leaves this dimension, then his creation will be destroyed. We have no choice. And then Zen was like, Natasha, are you sure? What will happen to our universe? And then she said, said, we have no choice. There's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make. Even if that means many of our friends will not see and live beyond this war. I have hope in our Heavenly Father above. But a new age of peace, a peace everlasting, could still occur. Father, am I right? And then Andrew said, yes, my daughter. The future belongs to you and Sonoma. Whatever you want us to do, we will do it. Siegfried then was shocked. And you had officially given the reins of the empire to his daughter. And then he replied, Lady Natasha, here with you. And then, as they prepared for one last attack, Vokata Magna was getting impatient. Are you fools done yet? Time is ticking. My light will consume the entire universe and all the universes. Time and space itself is coming to an end. As Vokatamagna said these words, David Lafleur and Sarge were running from the light. It had reached their time as well. The fabric of time and space and everything else was collapsing as the light was beginning to consume all. As Fleur began to fight immortals, uh, as the Floor, the Third, the Floor Junior, and everyone else was preparing to die for what they believed in. Natasha, Sonoma, Andrew, Siegfried, and Zen all put their hearts into one single attack and blasted all of the power that they had in them including their wills at Fokata Magna who was flying above them Fokata Magna then extended his left hand and blocked it and he said <laughs> is this what you come up with you fools you can't beat me like this and then Sonoma said you heard him give him everything we have drain our energies even if it costs our lives, for the sake of our family and friends, and for the future. Attack! And then everyone else was motivated, and they give up all the last of their energy, every little drop of the great power that each one of them had, and the clue in their own power in this last single attack. Then for Captain Magna, Ben noticed that the attack was getting stronger, and then he had to use both of his hands, and then he said, what is this? It can't be. I'm beginning to struggle. I saw Captain Magna pondered what they were doing. Then Andrew said, We have to rush him. Fly closer. Let's go. And then our heroes began to fly directly at him at full power. But Captain Magna was being pushed back as he struggled to hold back the attack. And then, as they got closer, but Captain Magnus' hand slipped, and the attack hit him directly in the gut. But Captain Magnus was pushed so far out, he had broke out of the void of the light. I was in the universe. As he saw the first stars, but Captain Magnus, but Captain Magna then said, Impossible. I defeated. It, it can't. It can't. And before he could finish, Suddenly, a big explosion appeared from him. And just how Navi said, but Captain Magnus' presence destroyed, the presence in the universe destroyed both him and everything that he caused. This included the light, the immortals, and subsequently, all the other universes. Suddenly, time is made right. And then, all of the universes from Skalosaka to Bilderon to Pankron to Lacoon to Cardia to Kalian to Guardian to Albina 
and Dr. Young universes all collided and became one big massive universe. The full size of extent and extent of the entire universe was at last found and was made whole. With this, the war with Fokata Magna was over and everything that he did was starting to be erased. Now back in the war in the Kalian, now Kalian galaxies as they were now a part of the universe. Kaldan Kada had one whip. I was going to whip Garvin, Sia, Dentlands, and Ren with his whip, which he did. This knocked all four of them out. And then Vera Allen used one mighty sucker punch at the unsuspecting Kaldan Kada. Kaldan Kada was then uh, knocked out and his whip knocked out of his hand. At last, this last opponent, last governor of a universe, was finally defeated. Then, Yuvi Doctor and Ren recovered. And after he recovered, he got up. And everyone looked as the light had disappeared. And suddenly, Calden Carter and all his Carolians were disappearing. And... The Carnian heads were defeated, those of the J.S. and Kelly clan, as Randor and Indy had defeated them. Calden Carter then said, Huh, I was shocked. At last, I found a truly worthy opponent. I enjoyed this fight. I thank you very much for giving me the fight that I always wanted. And then UV Doc Duran then commented and said, So that is what you want. Then Calden Calder, I pray that the true God of heaven forgives you for falling for a false light. Then Calden Calder then said, I have been fooled indeed. I just pray that I am forgiven for my folly. And then him and his army disappeared, along with the light and the immortals. Everywhere, the immortals disappeared. Some summer, then laid down on the ground, a sigh of relief, but it was finally over. Trey and Sasha A and all the rest of them rejoiced as the war was finally over. The whole universe was combined and united. Everyone, those in the lagoon, even though it was in the Obelon clan, as, as Sia looked on and saw the mighty universe in all its splendor and said, This universe is too big to conquer. How did this happen? Who's responsible? And then her uncle then said, So, this is it. This is what Father meant. Hmm. The power of Androsica indeed is strong. And only they have the power to rule such a massive universe. Our side has lost. It's over. And with that, peace was finally restored to the universe. If the universe fully united, it was all over. And thus, after some time, the forces of Andrew and Tehran Roli Seen had finally met face to face again. The two former rivals then shook hands and said, This is Tehran Roli speaking, my rival and nemesis. At this war, we finally were allies and we were able to work together to defeat evil. And then Andrew replied and said, hmm, I knew you were, uh, you were alive all along, Roel. Thank you for aiding my family in the time of need. And then the two nemesis shook hands as Tehran had Tero and raised Samsung on his corner. And Andrew had Zen and Natasha in his corner. Tero then commented to Zen and said, Old man, 
I see that you're well, but I know that this was indeed your last war. Unfortunately, you will not live to see much longer. What will you do in your last days? And Zen said, I've lived my life. All I can ask for now is for Natasha to reign supreme. And then the both of them cheered on as everyone began to celebrate. Pat Princeton and Angelo had met and were drinking and Princeton expressed his feelings as Angelo was the last descendant from Princeton's line. And Angelo sympathized with Princeton and said, I know exactly what you're thinking. But indeed, I and I alone have the solution to that long after you lot are gone. And then Princeton said, what could I possibly be, Angelo? And Angelo said, ah, oh, some things you don't tell. Besides, I'll make sure all of you lot return back to heaven, if that's where you went, that is. And then Princeton and Angelo toasted to the future that they will now create. As those that had returned from the time expansion for this great war were going to return home, I was going home, and this included Angel of Law and his brother and Zerlin and all the rest of them. Natasha fared better, farewell to her father and brother, who she knew him and helped her. At last, the war was over. The war was over. And now that all the heroes that had appeared were now gone, those that were left from the islands, the Builderon, uh, Minus, Esdom, and Tehran, and Krayton, Krayson Song, and the Shron, who are now officially took over the, as the Ned Head Clan, as the Bosch and Krayson were too small to handle the clan, to handle the size of their space. And the Oberlong and their allies were quiet and remained quiet during that time. And the Pankaran was said by Angelo and Cardinal was said by Angelo. And the main universe with the new generation and all those and the such. And Alina, who was not the queen of Anjosica. Who was the queen of Anjosica was in a massive ceremony with all the allies and friends and knights of Anjosaka that all played a role in the Great War and helping Anjosaka to win. Alina then crowned Natasha, the new queen and head of Anjosaka. Everyone cheered as Natasha now was head of the empire and the road to everlasting peace of a new generation led was about to begin. Other things that had happened. The Christian had the holy water and able to use it in Akichi, healing him from his wounds. And so he was now on his legs again. And he continued on to do what he did best, training with Sonoma. And also, the who was the father of Janetta? Was it Sana? Or was it regal? The DNA test showed, but it was neither of them. Apparently, her mother, Janetta's Jean mother, lied to both of them about her leg legacy as a way to control them and to ensure peace in their universe. But this lie helped pre usher in a new age, an age of peace and stability for their space. Seeing this, Janetta then left, as by that time, Regal had passed away because of his injuries, and Tamar Bosch became the new head of the Bosch clan, and Zana went on to rule in their space. Janetta and her people and her forces and technology went on as she then mourned for the loss of Sephon. And then, as she went on space, she found Vera and Vera Allen and her cousin were fighting 
Well, we're fighting to form a new small organization that will bring peace to ensure peace and justice. More like a secret service type organization for the Empire. And Janetta heard of Ferris might and said and commented, Hey, you guys, would you want a third member of this team to join you? And then the ladies were shocked. They didn't expect someone like Junetta to find them. And so Patrice was like, sure, the more the merrier. And then Vera and Junetta finally met these two powerful young women from two different universes. Met for the first time and shook hands and began the foundation of their organization. Elsewhere, Sarah A. and all the closet troop officers from Flex and Hodge and all the rest of them from uh, Creighton who had gone and sent it back to heaven. Creighton signed and Siegfried Sinjin signed and Siegfried had returned to heaven as well. Sarah A. was now made the new head of closet troop as all of the Madonians after the Thurons left retired. And now Madonna, like in Sharon and Kichiru, stopped fighting. And thus, Sarah A. can now say in full confidence in the new Kozuchu Gal Castle and their massive galaxy. At last, Kozuchu has outlasted Madonna. And all the Kozuchu rejoiced. As now the Kozuchu are now a staple power within this new and Josephine empire. All seemed well as a new age towards everlasting peace was now at full swing. The end. <laughs>